This is an instructional video on ulnar nerve neuromobilization. The ulnar nerve is a nerve that comes from the medial cord of the brachial plexus from level C8 to T1. It lies posteromedial to the brachial artery in the arm and passes behind the medial epicondyle through the cubital tunnel. The nerve enters the forearm behind the flexor carpi ulnaris and then descends along the ulnar side of the forearm. It crosses superficial to the flexor retinaculum on the radial side of the pisiform to enter the hand. What is neuromobilization? Neuromobilization is a technique used to treat irritated, compressed, or adhered nerves. It helps nerves move relative to surrounding structures such as muscles or other connective tissues. Neuromobilization can be performed out of tension or in tension depending on irritability of symptoms. Out of tension neuromobilization techniques. The key to out of tension techniques is that no symptoms are recreated throughout treatment. It can be completed using single end tensioners or double end sliders or flossing. Out of tension techniques are used before or after in tension techniques. If in tension techniques aren't tolerable, or for a home exercise program. Intention neuromobilization techniques. The key to intention techniques is that symptoms are reproduced, but each oscillation returns to a pain-free range. These techniques can be completed using single end tensioners or double end sliders or flossing. Intention techniques are used as first choice treatment if the patient can tolerate it. For example, chronic conditions. It is also used for home exercise programs with patients. This slide summarizes the indications and contraindications for ulnar nerve neuromobilization. Indications include if a patient's complaining of numbness or tingling along the ulnar nerve distribution, and if the patient's demonstrating positive upper limb tension tests with an ulnar nerve bias. Contraindications include recent onset or worsening of neurological symptoms, cauda equina lesions, or spinal cord injury. Some things to consider to be precautious about are heightened irritability of the patient, other conditions that may be aggravated during the testing such as dizziness, conditions that weaken the nervous system such as HIV, diabetes, or MS, circulatory disturbance, and also this should not be given as a home exercise program on the first day of treatment because you want to assess the patient response to the tests. Before performing an ulnar nerve neuromobilization, you'd first want to determine the sensitivity of your patient's ulnar nerve by performing the upper limb tension tests with the ulnar nerve bias. The procedure for the upper limb tension test ulnar nerve bias is as follows. First, place the patient in supine with their arms supported. Then, extend their wrist and fingers. Pronate or supinate their forearm. Then flex the elbow. Depress the shoulder girdle. Laterally rotate their arm and abduct their shoulder. Make note of where they start to feel their symptoms again. You can also have them side bend their head away from the arm that you're testing and then towards the arm that your testing to determine if there's a positive upper limb tension test with ulnar nerve bias. So Alyssa, what you've been telling us here in the clinic is that you're having numbness and tingling in these two fingers, and that might be due to tension in a nerve that goes to those fingers. So that's the ulnar nerve, it comes from your neck all the way down into those fingers. To see if that's really the case here, we're going to do a test today called the upper limb tension test with an ulnar nerve bias. What this test does is it puts the ulnar nerve on at maximum tension so that we can see if when that nerve is pulled as long as it can be, you do get those symptoms, okay? As we're doing this test, I want you to tell me as soon as you start feeling your symptoms. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start by extending your wrist and fingers and pronating you. And I'm going to flex your elbow, later, uh, depress your shoulder, laterally rotate you, and start walking your shoulder up. I feel it. Okay. Now do me a favor. With your nose up towards the ceiling, side bend away from me. How does that feel? It makes them more. Okay. And side bend towards me. How does that feel? It goes away. Great. Now Alyssa, because you did feel those symptoms in your fingers, and because bending away made them worse and bending towards me made them better, that is a positive test for ulnar nerve tension. 
The following is the procedure for ulnar nerve neuromobilization. Since you've already performed the ulnar nerve tension test with the ulnar nerve bias, based on the results, you'd want to determine what level of treatment is appropriate for the patient, in or out of tension. Decide which component of the upper limb tension test should be used for treatment. Any of the components of the test can be used for mobilization, regardless of the test order. To perform the neuromobilization properly, you'd want to oscillate for 10 to 60 seconds, do it 1 to 10 times, depending on the patient's irritability, and about 1 to 5 times per day. So Alyssa, during that last test, we found that if we raise your arm up a little higher than this, you start getting symptoms. We backed off a little. Do you have any symptoms now? No. Great. We're going to work on some out of tension maneuvers, which means we keep your nerve in slack the whole time. You shouldn't have any symptoms during this, okay? All right. A single end maneuver is when we move just one end of the nerve. That would be like doing this. So here we're just moving one end of the nerve, and the one that starts in your neck is staying stationary. If we want to do a double end maneuver, which is called flossing, so if you can imagine when you're flossing your teeth, you move both hands. What I want you to do is, as I'm moving your out elbow away from you, extending your arm here, I want you to bend away from me, okay? Like this, and towards me. Great. Do you have any symptoms? No. Excellent. We're going to do this for 60 seconds, and if it still feels good after that, we're going to do it five more times. And doing these when we teach you them later for home can help reduce your symptoms. So Alyssa, now we're going to do some intention maneuvers, which means we want you to feel your symptoms, but only on part of the oscillations we're doing. Right now, I'm going to bring you up, and you let me know when you feel your symptoms again. No. Okay, great. So then I'm going to extend your elbow out. Do you feel those symptoms? No. Okay, so I'm coming into your symptoms and out of them. These are intention maneuvers. And this is a single end maneuver again, because we're just moving one end of the nerve. Now, if we want to do a double end or flossing maneuver, I want you to mirror me with your head. So as I come in, you bend away from me. And as I go out, you come with me. Very nice. Do you feel your symptoms? and gone. Symptoms and gone. Very nice. We're going to do this for 60 seconds, then we'll see how you feel. You're still doing okay. We'll do it five more times. And eventually this can help reduce your symptoms. Okay, listen, now I'm going to teach you a way you can do some of these exercises at home. Okay? Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is bring your arm up near that position where you start feeling your symptoms. Are you feeling any symptoms yeah. now? Okay, drop your arm down just a little bit. We're going to do out of tension first. Okay. What I want you to do is bend your wrist away and back. Good. Down and back. No symptoms through this whole thing? No. Great. So I'd like you to keep those in mind for home, and then if you want to do in tension at home, raise your arm up until you feel your symptoms, and then away and back. Symptoms, symptoms Got it. off. On, off. Very nice. So that's an in tension maneuver. And I'd like you to practice these at home. What you're going to do is do these for a minute at a time. That feels a little too long. 30 seconds is okay. I'd like you to do five repetitions of that, and then five times a day, okay? Okay, great. By performing the ulnar nerve neuromobilization using the procedures and parameters described, your patient should see a decrease in pain, decreased neurosymptoms, and increased function. There are several benefits of neuromobilization. It facilitates nerve binding, reduces nerve adherence, disperses noxious fluids, helps increase neurovascularity, and improves axoplasmic flow. Although there's limited RCTs on this intervention, clinicians think that it's very effective with their patients. Evidence also suggests it helps treat cubital tunnel syndrome. And also, for patients with cervical radiculopathy, research shows that pain was decreased among those with PT and neuromobilization compared to those that only received traditional PT. We hope you enjoyed our video on ulnar nerve neuromobilization.